Hi guys, and welcome. Today I have the opportunity to sit down with Mr. Mark Patterson, who is of course the blockchain and fintech advisor for Warbly. Mark, I've heard a lot of really good things about you. I've been looking forward to speaking with you for a long time. So I just want to welcome you and say thank you so much for taking a few minutes to be able to sit down and have a chat with me today. Thanks, Matt. I'm looking forward to this. For sure. So I guess we'll start here. You're definitely not new to evolving technologies in regards to fintech. Can you kind of speak on some of your past experiences in evolving emerging technology in the finance space and how have some of those maybe shaped your thoughts towards what Warbly is in the midst of accomplishing? Okay, well, I suppose the best example I can give you is my company was first was the first company to enable a credit union in Australia to deliver or provide an internet banking service way back in 1996. We did that off the back of uh, meeting Bill Gates at Darling Harbour in Sydney. He came out to Australia in early 1995 to do the pre-launch stuff for Windows 95, which was bigger than Ben-Hur way back then. You were probably in short pants back then. And it was a real thrill for us. My, myself and my partners went to Darling Harbour and we sat in row 10 and there was Bill Gates, larger than life, about 20 feet away, speaking with his ad noidal tones. It was just terrific. And he showed us Windows 95 and it was a revolution. We could see that this was going to be a major event in personal computing. So on the flight on the way back home, we started to think, well, how can we actually utilize this new platform that was coming within a matter of months to deliver something that would be interesting or new or vibrant? We actually had a customer then called Uni Credit Union. It was a, a, a university credit union in, in Brisbane and they had a very high penetration of PCs. So we thought, well, Let's see if we can build an internet banking system. So we started from scratch and built an internet banking system for them, for their members and to use. And they were the first credit union in the world to deliver an internet banking platform. We went on to build that product out and the brand name was NetTeller. And I think at, at its peak, we had 50 financial institutions in Australia using it from some very large multi-billion dollar institutions down to very small, tiny credit unions. Off the back of that, the, the year later, we, we sold or we did a licensing arrangement with a Heritage Building Society, which is now called Heritage Bank. And they had sold it to their board on the basis that it would be, uh, you know, it would equal the volume of perhaps their largest branch. So the board had been convinced to spend the money to get this new system. Within a matter of three months, it was doing the same transaction volumes as all of their branches combined. So... The success of internet banking was proven very quickly back in those days. So that's an example, I think, of you know how get jumping on board and evolving technology and having a crack, having a go, um, can lead to some significant success if you're prepared to back your judgment. Yeah, absolutely. I do remember Windows 95. I remember messing around with DOS before there was ever a Windows. Um, so I get it. And it's, it's interesting because it seems like you were really starting to work with the internet in a time where people were really unsure of what the internet really was. And ultimately, that fits a lot of the undertones of blockchain today. So I think yeah. it's, it's super interesting personally. What do you think that some of the possibilities Warbly brings to the table for the finance sector, in your opinion, of course, that might pave the way towards accessibility, fairness, and kind of reshaping the industry and finance as we know it. I think Werbley's KYC AML on-chain service provides a turnkey solution for all members of the finance sector. I mean, that's the focus. Werbley's focus is on the finance sector, but that doesn't mean we're going to limit ourselves just to the finance sector, but that our initial focus is on finance. It's a chance to deploy a software black box that delivers verified individuals and details into their existing systems, whatever they might be. They might be a superannuation entity, they might be wealth management, financial planners, banks, credit unions, building societies, other parts of the finance sector. So in this day and age, security and verification are more important than anything. I mean, you must be able to verify that who you are dealing with who they say they are, particularly when we're talking about money. So once you understand the benefits of blockchain, uh, the distributed ledgers, you can quickly start to imagine how the Warbly platform can provide the level of comfort needed to offer products and services via customer-facing digital device-based delivery channels. I, I like that turn of phrase, customer-facing digital device-based delivery channels. It's a long way of saying smartphones. <laughs> yeah, I, I had the opportunity to check out your website of one of the most recent companies that you worked for. And you guys are doing some really interesting things with 
technology and biometrics and banking. So mm. I'm going to make sure that I, I leave some of that information below in the comments. But um, I'm really excited to know that you're on board and you're one of the people who was kind of paving the way for what's going on just with your past experience. I want to talk to you about maybe the other side of the coin right now. And that revolves around kind of a new wave of what I would call financial discrimination that we're seeing. How do you think that the industry is coping with that financial discrimination and how do you see it evolving in the future? Um, For a start, I abhor financial discrimination. I mean, I come from a background of delivering products and services to the cooperative sector, which is based on everybody is equal. I mean, the whole principle behind a cooperative or a mutual is that you're all equal shareholders in the entity, which is unlike uh, major banks, which are more focused on shareholder return and generating profits. So I have a, a natural abhorrence to financial discrimination because of my background, and I spent 40 plus years in this sector. So I bought the whole uh, cooperative mutual ethos hook, line and sinker a long time ago. So when I see discrimination in any form, it naturally goes against my tendencies. In Australia, we have the Customer Owned Banking Association and their acronym is COBA. Um, People can look that up if they want. And they represent, or they're an industry body that represents all financial institutions that are cooperatives or mutuals. And they make representations on behalf of that sector to state and federal governments. We also have the Business Council of Cooperatives and Mutuals, or the BCCM, you can look them up as well, which is a a representative body for all cooperatives in Australia. So we have financial cooperatives, but we also have other cooperatives, um, cooperatives that do groceries, grain cooperatives, dairy cooperatives, and you probably have similar things all across the world in most uh, Western democracies. So these two organisations do a fantastic job in representing the interests of cooperatives and rep- and making representations to the government. Just recently, they've been able to convince the government that we are the smallest part of the sector, of the finance sector, but we are the most important part because we're often dealing with individuals and people who've been rejected by the major trading banks for whatever the reason. So when you're drafting new legislation or new regulations, you need to factor in that one size doesn't fit all. You can't develop a piece of legislation that applies right across the finance sector because not all financial institutions are equal and not all are based on the same ethos. Yeah, I agree with you. I think that cryptocurrency has gotten a little bit of a bad rap and whatever reasons those might be for. My ultimate hope and and goal and the reason why I stand behind Warbly and I dedicate so much of my time to the project is because I do see them being able to create some equality and break down some of those barriers of blockchain simply by creating what's a really uh, simple idea. KYC, you know, just an identity layer on EOS IO, but it's, it means the world when it boils down to, to regulation. And I've always thought that the compliance aspect of Warbly combined with the speed of EOS IO was really exciting. What does this combination potentially bring for the future in regards to the way people interact with digital assets and and fiat alike? In my opinion, one of the potential impediments to blockchain being widely adopted was the perceived lack of speed and the capacity to handle volume. In Warbly and and EOSIO, to a large extent, have overcome those issues, which widens the potential range of applications to the platform, where once I thought that low volume and static transactions like those associated with a sale and the transfer of the ownership of a piece of property were an ideal application for blockchain. I can now see that we can deliver dApps using the Warbly platform that offer a much wider range of services and applications. The general populace, you know, accept that 128-bit and 256-bit encryption work. They don't understand how it works. They just accept that it works and that smarter people than them have proven them to be secure technologies. Well, the same applies now with blockchain, you know. In the old days, well, in today, if you have enough compute power at your hand, you can brute force crack existing encryption systems. It doesn't necessarily give you access to any uh, useful information because every packet is encrypted, so you've got to crack a bunch of packets. But it can be done. And, I mean, you only need to stay up to date with current affair and news and see that there are certain agencies of certain uh, jurisdictions that are capable of doing all sorts of wonderful things that we're not privy to. 
So the beauty of blockchain distributed ledgers is that it is virtually unbreakable. Um, so, yeah, I guess, you know, we could get into an interesting discussion on this subject, but we probably should leave it there, I think. <laughs> I wanted to ask you something that I didn't necessarily prep you for and something uh, that I'm really excited about. I'm just going to throw this at you. What kind of technologies do you think that Warbly might be able to incorporate that previously may not have been incorporated in blockchain due to some of some of the identity layer and due to the speed of EOS IO? Is there anything, and if you're not able to tell me, it's okay, but is there anything maybe you could hint at that we might see that's really going to set Warbly apart as something really revolutionary for blockchain and banking alike? I'm, I'm not actually involved in the development side. I'm, I'm involved in the business uh, aspects of, of Warbly. So I know, I know a little bit about what our team is doing, but I shouldn't give too much away. Let me say this. I, I can see a day in the future where you as a private individual might be offered Blockchain is the underlying encryption platform for your credit card. So instead of using existing technologies that we all have available to us today, depending on the service uh, provided by your financial institution, you might find that in the future you'll get an email from your financial institution saying, from this day in the future, you can flick a switch. And after that, every one of the credit card transactions that you perform on your credit card will be secured on chain. Um, I think that would be a really cool feature to offer the public. So it becomes in an individual choice so that you as an individual can choose to use on-chain security to underpin your, all of your credit card transactions going forward or not continue on with whatever technology is available or you've been using in the past. Another example that I can see, no, I probably shouldn't tell you that. We should, we'll just leave it at that. So, I, yeah, I can see that. Because of the speed, it it might even come down to an individual choice rather than a blanket application across all members of a financial institution. It might be an option for you to consider. Yeah, I um, I do. I'm I'm privy of a little bit of what's happening behind the scenes, and I think if I were to hint at anything, I think Dominic would kill me. So I shall (laughs) not. But um, I know that there's some really exciting things coming up, and. I know that the future looks good and I'm personally really excited about seeing the chain launch and just seeing some of the amazing dApps that are, that are coming. So Mark, I thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. I know you're a busy man and hopefully we can sit down we can have another chat sometime and I'm looking forward to the launch of Warbly. Thanks for chatting with me and all the best. Thanks, Matt. I really enjoyed it. It's always good to see you. Take care. And yeah, look, I'm available anytime you want to do this again in the future. It's good fun. Sounds great, my friend. Thank you. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye. Okay. Bye.